Do God, it's what you're creating. See, my head is filled with demons, so I know that angels exist. Feeling stuck at the bottom of the deepest sinking. Even though my heart is broken, empty moments still I know I spit it cold and cold is frozen. Flows of oceans, I've been rolling. Tides are hopeless, minds are fighting, filled with lies. I killed my ties, but where's my motive, huh? I've been on this path so long, I forgot where home is. Real or worse. What do you call a low-fat Pokemon? A Butterfree. What's going on, YouTube? It's Knox Hill, and we're back with our reaction series. So today, today. Man, today is Friday, the greatest day on planet Earth because we are back with more ERB. Now you guys know I read the comment section, the good, the bad, the ugly, the troll, and this is definitely one of the next highest requested ones. We are going to go back and relive my childhood right now. I am talking about Ash Ketchum versus Charles Darwin. But before we go any further, guys, I'm going to give a quick shout out to the song in the intro. If you like that, yes, I'm a rapper. There's a good chance if you like my breakdowns, the way that I think about music, you'll probably like my music as well. I have a new album, Chaos Theory, 20 tracks, heart and soul, so much time put into it. So if you guys want to support me and support the channel directly, I'll put that link below also a quick shout out to tomorrow 1 p.m est we will be back in live streaming here on this channel come watch me break my brain it's always a good time and a good energy on the lives but anyways anyways we know what we're here for charles darwin ash step up to the plate let's see what you got I'm not even looking at what's going on on the screen because my childhood is just flashing before my eyes at this exact moment in time. I want to be the very best like no one ever was. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay. The nostalgia is real right now. I love how they took... You know, the theme song from the TV show, sampled from that, you have the electric rock guitar, just the whole vibe to it, the build-up. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Uh-huh. This is dope. That is so dope how they did it like on the Game Boy. Hey, real quick, Pokemon Red? Or Pokemon Blue. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, and I feel bad for your childhood because you didn't have the same one as me. And if you come through with Pokemon Yellow, you can get the fuck out of here right now. Okay? But anyways, dope graphics because it is like the opening of a battle. You know, when you challenge someone else, I love how the camera pans around just like it does in battle format. That's dope. Oh, no one wants to battle, doesn't seem like a fight, but this should be fun. I've yet to catch the ghost type. Has Ash ever caught a ghost type? If he hasn't, that's an even crazier dope line than the face value one. Obviously, Darwin is no longer here, so he's a ghost. Ash Ketchum is the 10-year-old that never ages because Pokemon is still going on. I don't even know what we're in, like Pokemon, Indigo, Rainbow, Violet, Silver, Platinum, something like that at this moment in time. That doesn't seem like a fight, but this should be fun. I've yet to catch the ghost type. got the highest beat stats. Drop, rap, lightning back. Got the highest speed stat. I drop raps lightning fast. Shout out to his favorite Pokemon, Pikachu. Electric Pokemon, also known for his speed. And then, oh, this is good. Because in a battle, whoever has the highest speed stats gets to go first. Gets to make the first attack. Ash is rapping first on this first. Oh. And that's dope. When he's getting ready to throw his Pokeball, he always switches his hat from forwards to backwards. I used to do that as a kid before I would go out into the world. But this should be fun. I get to catch the ghost I got the highest beat stats. Drop, rap, lightning nice. bass. Open my pockets and go. On your ass, cause I'm... Open my pockets. Hang on, hang on. The highest beat stats. Drop, rap, lightning There's a lot that happened. Open my pockets and go. Open my pockets and go, Charizard. I love how they zoom in on his eye because just like the animation, when they zoom in on Ash and then you have like the, I mean, listen, this is earlier cartoons and anime and I'm looking behind me like that's going to happen here on this screen somehow with me editing. Never, never, ever. But you know, when you didn't have like CGI back then and you had to make like a motion blur happen, you would just put like the lines you know what I mean? Like painted lines going up and down. Again, nobody can see this and I am crazy right now, but I'm so happy that we're doing Pokemon today. This is real life. <laughs> so 
So open my pockets and go. Pokemon, like when you used to get the Japanese cards, it said pocket monsters on the back. So it's Pokemon or known as pocket monsters. So I love that. And he's pulling like a Pokeball from his pocket and throwing it. Nice casual double. Also, we're going to give him a triple because he's Ash and he's awesome. And, uh, you know, like when you're rapping in the pocket and I talk about these flows in the pocket of rhythm. Let's go. That is nice. Charizard, because I'm Ash, because Charizard, like, burning flembers, flembers, fucking hell, burning flames and embers will turn something to Ash, get it, playing off of his name, because I'm Ash, and that's A to the, shh, be quiet, be quiet when I'm rapping, ripping up this mic. Open my pockets and go, on your ass, because I'm Ash, and that's A to the shush, I don't care how many beetles and butterflies you squish, earthworms, beetles and butterflies you squish. Because Char Charizard, wow, my brain is already mush and we're not even into this battle yet. Because Darwin, uh, he collected bugs, didn't he? I mean, he would study beetles and he even studied like earthworms. He wrote a whole thesis on earthworms. Yeah, he just, he, he was really infatuated with insects and they were key to him to studying evolution and starting his earlier principles and ideas. So I think he's playing off of that. And then obviously we're playing off of the different Pokemon types. Yeah, and that's A to the shush. I don't care how many beetles and butterflies. Yeah, 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 oh, there it is. Your earthworms can't beat these magical beasties because if you want to compare all the animals that you get to study versus the ones that I study on my Pokedex and that I collect, well, mine are pretty badass. I mean, mine can shock you. They can burn you. They can drown you. Wow, that's actually incredibly violent. Wait, is one of my favorite children's shows violent? I didn't even think about it. Open my pockets and go on your ass because I'm ass. And that's A to the shush. I don't care how many beetles and butterflies you score. Your earthworms can't beat Uh, shit talking origin of feces so playing off of darwin's origin of species where he laid out his foundation and his theories of evolution but all, obviously he's playing off of your shit talking like literal shit known as feces origin of feces i like that that's clever his voice is a little bit corny isn't it i get it because he's supposed to be 10 it's supposed to be like kind of you know the cornier catchier childhood show but Ash kind of has like a raspy voice and a pretty unique sort of tone. Interesting that he didn't choose to like try to mimic Ash's actual tone, like at least in the English dub of everything, versus going for this, which is still, yeah, I guess it works. Hey, we're not going to throw shade on Ash, not around. How many beetles and butterflies you score? Earthworms can't beat these magical beasties. Shit talking mouth is the origin of feces. You got candy wraps, Reese's Pieces in this ecosystem. You got candy wraps, Reese's Pieces. Candy, you got weak shit that you're rapping with, R-A-P, but also like a candy rapper, W-R-A-P. And then, how do you say it? That's the biggest question you're going to have to comment down below. Is it Reese's Pieces or is it Reese's Pieces? Ooh. See, he bent it to make it rhyme with feces, but I think as a kid, I definitely said Reese's Pieces, which was incredibly incorrect because uh, Reese, it's all about Reese. Reese invented people, all right? Get your enunciation right. Mouth is the origin of feces. We got candy wraps, Reese's Pieces. In this ecosystem, I'm the dominant species. When it's time to... Nice, because Darwin playing off of different ecosystems and talking about the dominant species when it comes to evolution and it comes to the principles of, you know, survival and survival of the fittest. So here, Ash is saying, listen, man, I'm the dominant rapper. I'm the dominant species. Candy wraps, like Reese's Pieces. In this ecosystem, I'm the... I'm not even catching like all the different Pokemon that are appearing in the background. Team Rocket, we got Team Rocket in the background. Hang on. Who is playing Team Rocket? That's a little Easter egg right there. That is awesome. Train, I turn to Pikachu, <laughs> but when I need a weak verse, I choose you. <laughs> and then Pikachu gets shocked. But when I need a weak verse, I choose you. I love that because Ash always goes, I choose you, Pikachu, and just throws his ass out there to get to work. But he's saying, if I need a weak verse, I'm going to choose you, Darwin. Time to train, I turn to Pikachu, but when I need a weak verse, I choose you. Did we get a Pika in the background too? As Pika was running in on the ad libs, I heard Pika. That's great. When it's time to train, I turn to Pikachu. But when I need a weak nice. bird, I choose you. Hello there, welcome to a world called Earth. 
where actual minds do groundbreaking work. If you're looking for the f Oh, wow. That is just so haughty and so casually just going, yeah, I'm, I'm above you, right? Hello. Welcome to a world called Earth. I love Darwin's troll right there because Ash obviously lives in a fictional place, even though in my mind, Pokemon is real, okay? Welcome to a world called Earth, where actual minds do groundbreaking work. Where actual minds do groundbreaking work instead of talking about fantasy and these different things like we actually progress mankind, progress the study and progress science. I like that. I like how he comes in with that. Just so casual with the hello, injects his personality into it. That's nice. Hello there, welcome to a world called Earth, where actual minds do groundbreaking work. If you're looking for the fittest on the natural selection, you're so in If you're looking for the fittest, again, survival of the fittest, playing off of evolutionary principles, natural selection. He is the natural selection for this rap. It's also doubling for his natural selection when it comes to evolution. Natural minds do groundbreaking work. If you're looking for the fittest on the natural selection, you're so ineffective you couldn't even turn a just not hard. Oh, that's mean. That's mean. Ash is just encapsulated in time because he's been 11 for the entire Pokemon series. No, he hasn't been 11, sorry. He's been 10. He's been 10, and he's yet to have an 11th birthday. A natural selection, you're so ineffective, you couldn't even turn a lever. This bitch just not hard hitting enough. It's kid stuff, you're soft like a jiggly puff. You got no. Just not hard hitting enough, it's kid stuff, because yeah, Pokemon is made for kids. Uh, this might be a stretch, but the company. Uh, isn't it 4Kids Entertainment and Funimation that runs Pokemon? No, I'm thinking Funimation for Dragon Ball Z, but 4Kids Entertainment for Pokemon. It's just not hard hitting enough. It's kid stuff. You're soft like a jiggly puff. You got. Jigglypuff. Come on. Come on. If anybody's played Super Smash Brothers, get on your Jigglypuff, put the opponent to sleep. But he's saying Jigglypuff, you know, is kind of swollen. Jigglypuff likes his Twinkies, that's for sure. Jigglypuff does love his Twinkies. It's just not hard hitting enough. It's kid stuff. You're soft like a Jigglypuff. You got no <laughs> like, like a Jigglypuff. That's just It's just not hard hitting enough. It's kid stuff. You're soft like a Jigglypuff. Did he just Soldier Boy? Even oh, turn it down. It's just not hard hitting enough. You. Kid stuff, you're soft like a jiggly puff. You got no game, boy, so you'll get the room quick. Real life. Ah, you got no game, boy, so you'll get the broom quick. Like, you're gonna get swept, swept up in this battle, sweeping it up like in a Pokemon battle when you just run through all the opponent's Pokemon and don't even lose one of your own. I like that. I like that one. That is clever. And then obviously playing Pokemon, which was originally on the Game Boy, going back to the Pokemon Red and Blue reference that I talked about before, but you also have no game. Like, you can't spit. You got no skills, no talent on this, and you are a little boy. Very, very clever wordplay there. I really like that one. <laughs> Hang on one second. All right, so talking about Ash Williams, wasn't it? That was Evil Dead. So Ash from the Evil Dead, who's a pretty badass dude, and he used to call his shotgun the boomstick. But also, listen, in typical ERB fashion, it is not right if we don't have at least one dick joke. So the dick joke here is, you know, calling it a boomstick and... That ash has a much bigger boomstick than this ash, but this ash is only 10 years old. Uh, maybe we're reading too much into that. Game boy, so you get the broom quick. Real ash packs, a much bigger boomstick. I'm a master of a naturalist. What a glimpse without class, all the crap on your lap. Outclass all the crap, masterful naturalist. I love how he bends that internal vowel scheme. That's a nice flow right there. I'm a master of a naturalist. What a glimpse without class, all the crap on your lap. Will outclass all the crap on your laughable list. Is he talking about like the list of Pokemon? He is not taking shots at the Pokedex right now. If he's taking shots at the Pokedex, we're going to have some issues. We're going to have some issues. But he's talking about, you know, all of the thousands of species that he has studied, that he has seen throughout his travels. They just outclass what Pokemon have been invented. And honestly, like the original Pokemon I, I liked, but then as the Pokemon series is going on, it's like, they just run out of ideas and they just grab the most random shit to make Pokemon out of. It's like they look around their house and just see like a box from FedEx and that becomes like Boxymon. You know, ground type. You guys know what I'm saying. I'm a master, I'm a I just said ground type, Earth. Come on. Yeah, what a glimpse, what a class, all the crap on your 
And also he was a naturalist, so playing off of uh, you know, what he studied and his connections to nature, but also naturalist in the sense that, you know, believing that the world was governed by physics and by science, not believing in sort of divine intervention as well. I like those little snare rolls and that beat switch right there. That was cool to accompany his flow switch. And then obviously we're taking shots at the merch saying that Pokemon is just about capitalism while Darwin stands for something greater. Darwin stands for the progression of science and mankind. And that was the hardest hitting bar from Darwin so far. Talking about my words, reverse the uh, natural first one natural natural on the church. Yeah, the first words of the church. So talking about the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and it made just Christianity rethink its principles. Like either you deny the existence of evolution, or you accept evolution, and then you have to rework things and say that, you know, God is the one that put the tools in place for evolution to happen. So he still created everything, but then he allowed a long time for evolution to take place and for mankind and animals today to develop. Church, yep. That's a really good one. Yo, um, real quick, this dude spent eight years studying barnacle dick. Kick it. You think I'm impressed by your boat trip, please? Oh, wow. Wow. See, I don't, I don't know the story of that one, but I can definitely believe it because Darwin, yeah, like I said, he studied insects, he studied earthworms, he just, yeah, studied all types of creatures that you would not find exactly super interesting or entertaining to watch, and what is the fun fact about barnacles? Don't they have, like, just enormous willies? They do have enormous penises, I'm pretty sure, because they don't have, they don't move, do they? So evolutionary-wise, they wanted to develop, you know, big old things to catch their women. Interesting. Years studying barnacle dick. Kick it. You think I'm BBD. Big barnacle dick. Spy your boat. Spent eight years studying barnacle dick. Kick it. You think I'm impressed by your... Obviously tells the DJ to kick it. Very MC thing to do. Like, kick it, let's go. We're kicking it here. Spent eight years studying barnacle dick. Kick it. You think I'm impressed by your boat trip? Please. You're the most annoying thing on a bagel since Flea. You're a Nice, because uh, when Darwin sailed around the world and he ended up in the Galapagos Islands where he formed a lot of his theories of natural selection and survival of the fittest, he was on the, uh, the HM Beagle. He took that all the way to Australia. Yeah, he, he did go all the way around the world in it. So I love that. Playing off of the boat. You think I'm impressed by your boat trip? I mean, think about all the boat trips that Ash takes himself. Come on now. Come on. So obviously playing off of the Beagle bars, like Beagle being a dog as well, like having fleas on a Beagle, Beagle the ship. And then, hang on a second. Impressed by your boat trip, please. You're the most annoying thing on a Beagle since Flea. You're a glitchy old man, best left that. Man, they really go deep on some of these references. The, uh, was that Mew or Mewtwo that you did that glitch for with the, the glitchy old man at sea to, uh, to try to catch him? I can't remember. I can't remember which one exactly. Somebody's going to have to help me in the comment section. But wow, he is really digging deep on these. So obviously Darwin being an old man at sea, the Pokemon glitch with the old man at sea. That's, that's good. Let's go. Set sail and Galapago, suck on these. Galapagos Islands, go suck on these. Nice casual wordplay right there as a uh, magic carp just jumps into the sea. So Galapagos sucking on those. Magic carp sucking on it, and he's riding away on a Lampras. Look, mighty Morphin Michael Fick. Your animated slave fights me. That's fucking good. Oh my god, and now we're having just more childhood nostalgia here. Shouting out Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So Mighty Morphin, right, saying like, you know, playing off of the kids show, you're a kid. So he's trolling him yet again. He's got some great opening lines on his verses to troll Ash. Mighty Morphin Michael Vick. Because Michael Vick, we, we, we know Michael Vick, right? Surely, surely. Well, maybe. Maybe not everyone who follows ERB follows football as well. So Michael Vick used to play for the Atlanta Falcons, then he played for the Philadelphia Eagles, infamous uh, NFL quarterback that got in trouble and went to jail for fighting and uh, breeding dogs to fight. Yeah, 
So what he's saying here, what I like, is because Michael Vick, animal cruelty, yes, all kinds of red flags there. Basically, if you think about Pokemon and the whole essence of it, you're capturing and enslaving uh, different Pokemon and forcing them to fight each other, which would actually be animal cruelty and would be illegal uh, in today's world. Wow, that really just crushed all of my childhood dreams and hope. Look, Mighty Morphin Michael Fick, your animated slave fights make me sick. What <laughs> yeah, get an animated slave fight, so playing off of that. The slaves, that's a nice little casual double right there. Also, this might be a little bit of a stretch. No, I don't think so, because... Um, very clever writing from ERB as always, but you know, Michael Vick being black and then obviously playing off of black in the slaves and then the slavery of the animals that were the Pokemon. And was it, wasn't there a story that Pokemon, like some of the fights, made kids sick? I might be stretching that one. I might not be. I don't know. Mighty Morphin Michael Fick, your animated slave fights make me sick. When I battle a foe from some simple of a king, I'm not Charles Sheen, but I am not winning. Wow, so we just got the infamous uh, Charlie Sheen interview when he's drinking tiger blood, and he's winning. He is winning. He has won at life. So he plays off of that, playing off of his name, Charles Darwin, and then Sheen, right? Charlie Sheen, Dar winning, Dar win, he's winning. That's clever, man. That's Tiger. Tiger blood in my life. Oh, from some simple of a cleaning. I'm not Charles Sheen, but I am Dar winning. Man, nice. if that's true, the nature is cruel. Cause the only thing you're winning is your cousin's gene pool. You lost three children while they were still small. TV and scarlet fever. Gotta catch them all. It's took billions of years for that kind. Oh, that might be the biggest low blow and dirtiest of all the lines. The only thing that you're winning, playing off of the Dar winning line, so a clever flip on that, is your cousin's gene pool because Charles Darwin married his first cousin. Yes, he was in an incestuous marriage. And then a lot of them speculate that one of the reasons why he had like 10 kids, didn't he? And a number of them died and they thought they had weaker immune systems and obviously issues and complications from the incestuous uh, marriage and bringing their children into the world and some of them died from TB and yeah yeah died from tb tuberculosis and then uh, scarlet fever as well i'm going to share a random fun fact with you guys that my great grandmother actually was diagnosed and had tuberculosis at a time when it was pretty much a you know just death toll for you if you got diagnosed with that i mean you don't really survive that before they had a vaccine for it so she was in bed for an entire year and didn't move stayed bedridden for a whole year did nothing and somehow beat it and overcame it. Just a random story for you. Thing you're winning is your cousin's gene pool. You lost three children while they were still small. TB and scarlet fever. Gotta catch them all. It's is he doing like Old Town Road right there? Little, little Nas X shout out and dance. But as you say on Pokemon, gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. So right here, he's saying, hey, you're catching all the diseases right now. Isn't it great? I love that flip. That is so clever, man. That is That might be my favorite. Just couple lines from Ash right there, back to back to back. That was just vicious. Man, if that's true, then nature is cool. Because the only thing you're winning is your cousin's gene pool. You lost three children while they were still small. TB and scarlet fever. Gotta catch them all. It's a billions of years. I mean, that is vicious like a Bulbasaur going against a Charizard. You know what I'm saying? You guys know what I mean by that. that kind of evolved, and I hunched over cell phones, laid with your paw, and it was hard losing. Oh, I love how that comes back around. You know, mankind starting off and then evolving to standing straight up. And then now it's almost shots at modern day and technology because we're all just addicted to social media and hooked on our phones just looking down. And that also, I take that as like a Pokemon Go shout out and obviously the Pokemon games because you're sitting there, you know, flicking the balls as you're throwing them out, trying to catch Pokemon. So playing with balls, but also dick joke, playing with Ash's balls. That's nice. losing my daughters and their brother as hard as the wood that oak gave your mother. That, that is a nice flip at the end. So he takes, yeah, it was hard, you know, losing my family, but not as hard. As the, uh, as the wood, you know, getting a woody down there, but also Professor Oak, who we first meet at the beginning of the series, Professor Oak, who sends Ash out on his journey to discover all the Pokemon, um, leaving Ash's mom at home, and yeah, who knows what happened between Professor Oak giving that wood 
to uh to Ash's mom. So we pull that joke in there at the end. That was clever. That was actually a really good battle. Um, I'm incredibly biased, so I'm definitely going to go with Ash, obviously, but I feel like Darwin had some really good flips and bars on that. Also, uh, I've been forewarned that I cannot play the end of this because apparently it could get copyright stricken, which we don't want to have happen. So I've been advised before going into this that I'm just supposed to leave it right here. So unfortunately, we can't let the end credits play. And uh, that's it. We're going to sign off on that. I'm going to go try to find my Game Boy now and relive the pass. All right, ERB, you were Knox Hill certified. So hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below any other ERBs you want to see me do or if there's other artists you want to see me check out. I try to read all of your comments, guys. I'll respond as much as I can, so please keep commenting and keep posting. Also, this is your reminder that tomorrow, 1 p.m. EST, we will be live streaming here on the channel. It's always a good time of great energy, guys, so be sure to come out and support that. This is your reminder to stay safe, to stay positive. It's Knox Hill. I'll catch you again soon. I'm out.